So one of the frequent questions I get asked by Flat Earthers is why don't we see stars in any of the footage from the International Space Station or even the Apollo moon landing photos where you see images like this but you cannot see any stars in the background. The sky looks completely black. Well, the answer is quite simple and any person who owns a basic camera can test this for themselves and it all relates to the exposure level of the camera. In photography, exposure is the amount of light per unit area, the image plane illuminance times the exposure time, reaching a photographic film or electronic image sensor as determined by shutter speed, lens aperture and scene luminance. So essentially what that means is that when we are using our camera, we can adjust the exposure value of the camera depending upon how much light is in the image and when we have images like this or like this there is quite a lot of light coming from the surface and from the earth and if we set the exposure value correctly to see the image the light of the stars are not bright enough to be captured by the image the only way we can see the stars is to greatly increase the exposure level but that has the adverse effect of overexposing the main image here and what I did over the last few nights was a number of time lapses of the moon where I again deliberately overexposed the image to show you that the stars are in fact visible and also that the stars are definitely moving at a different rate to the moon so in the following image you will see that so this is one of the time-lapse videos of the moon and prior to the moon rising I had set the exposure value high enough to see the non-illuminated side of the moon as it rose because that was the first part of the moon to move up above the horizon. So you'll see when I play this video in real time what you're seeing here are just some of the trees and lights in the background and there in the bottom left hand corner you just see the moon starting to become visible over the horizon. You can see that is the non-illuminated side of the moon because when it rises a bit further, the crescent illuminated side becomes more apparent. But as you can see, the image is overexposed and that's why you get this very bright light that doesn't even represent the original shape of the moon itself. Now as the moon continues to rise, I'm just adjusting the exposure value a number of times to show you the difference it makes. There you go, that would be a more realistic exposure value if I was just focusing on the moon itself. We're seeing the crescent shape of the moon. However, to see the stars, I have to significantly overexpose the image. You can see the non-illuminated side is now very visible. And now you start to see the stars as well. I move the moon to the lower part of the image show you the different exposure value again and then I just let the time lapse run and at this point you can see how the stars are most definitely moving in relation to the moon. So that's the reason why you cannot see stars in normal photos of the moon or photos from the ISS of the earth when the earth is correctly exposed the lights of the stars are just not bright enough at that exposure level and again right at the end of this time lapse you'll see I reduce the exposure value and all these stars that you can see very clearly are no longer visible. So I'll play the time lapse now and you can see this in real time and at the end of the video I have been asked by a number of people just to describe the equipment I'm using so if you want to see that, that'll be explained at the end of this video.
So the equatorial mount I'm using for most of these time-lapse videos is the Skywatcher as EQ6 GT. It's a good sturdy mount and it is a stable platform for the Coronado Solar Scope and also the Black Diamond ED80 refractor scope which I've used for the lunar time lapse you saw in this video. The capture camera is the ZWO ASI 294 MC Pro and the software that I use to operate the camera is called SharpCat which I'll show you shortly in another video. Now it's great software the only drawback I think is that the timestamp that it puts on the frames is a little small however I went on to the support forums and I have contacted the admin, the developer of the SharpCap software, and I've asked him to consider producing a customizable timestamp so that we can see it much more clearly in the time-lapse footage. And he has been quite responsive to that. Thanks for the suggestion. I will consider adding this customization. So hopefully if he does that in future time-lapse videos, we're going to see a much larger timestamp in the video. Now I just want to take this opportunity to give a quick shout out to John Michelson who has been working with me behind the scenes by email just giving me some good information on how to use the astronomy camera and also how to use SharpCap properly. So if you haven't seen John Michelson's channel please check it out. He has some excellent videos and some great tutorials on astrophotography. So here is the Coronado Solar Telescope fitted to the Skywatcher as EQ6 GT mount which is correctly polar aligned for Sydney, Australia. I have the ZWO294 astrophotography camera fitted and that's currently taking one frame every 30 seconds. It has been operating in time lapse mode since before sunrise but unfortunately the clouds have just come over so I think that's put an end to it for today. As you can see, the mount has moved past the meridian. It's currently after 1.30 p.m. here in Sydney. This mount does not require a meridian flip at midday like some equatorial mounts due to the drive motors being inside the moving head and there are no binding wires. As long as the telescope is small enough to clear the stand, it can just keep rotating without needing the meridian flip, which I've covered in another video. Now the camera is controlled by a program called Sharp Cap. Pro, which is running on a Windows 10 Microsoft Surface tablet and the advantage of this camera using this program is you have far better control over the camera itself. We can control the exposure value, the gain and even while the time lapse is running I can change the capture rate. It's currently capturing one frame every 30 seconds. When the sun was rising this morning I had it capturing one frame every two seconds and that makes for a much smoother appearance when you process the time lapse. But as you can see there's no image there unfortunately the clouds have come over so I'll have to give it away today and try again tomorrow.